Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is an author, a Mrs. Hawaii United States, and the founder and CEO of Fames Hawaii. She is Joni Reddick Yunt, and today we are going beyond leadership development. Hey, Joni, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, aloha, Rusty, aloha, Hawaii, aloha, world. <laughs> I'm so happy to be with you this morning. Joni, I'm so excited to have you on the show today. And I know that you were born in the Philippines. And can you tell me about the challenges and the conditions that you dealt with growing up in the Philippines? It was very humble beginning, Rusty. We didn't have no running water, no electricity. And it was very difficult. And also being uh, one of the five girls at two years old, I was kind of adopted uh, with my, aunt, um, my auntie. My parents didn't have hardly anything. She couldn't feed us five girls. So I was kind of like practically given away. Although that was a, a great experience too, being away because now you kind of feel the, the family that is very important to have. But growing up with my auntie, it was very, very humble beginning, like I said, but I have my cousins that live next to me, to us, and they are a lot older than I am. And I vividly remember that I, um, being that, you know, sometimes you watch movies just once a year, I always look up to these beautiful women that someday in my head, visualizing myself that I will be just like them later on. And I used to go sneak into the house and uh, take of the, one of their high heels. Then I used to just take it back at the house and just practice. And I used to, you know, being five, six years old, I, you know, it's too big. So then I would fall flat on my face, get up again. But I used to, I vividly remember Rusty that I used to dream a lot. I used to, like I said, visualize that, can I be in a better place uh, one day? And thank God that when I was 14 years old, we came to Hawaii. I was very, very shy then, but uh, like I said, I really wanted to better myself so that one day when I have my own children, I can be, um, you know, they can be proud of me as well. Now, Joni, I know that you were a nurse for many years. How, how, how did you enjoy being a nurse? I loved it, Rusty. Actually, I, I started uh, accounting first because I was working at Corris Hospital back then, it's now Polymony, and I used to pass the emergency room and I thought, oh, there's no way I cannot stand blood, right? <laughs> But then I got bored for my first year of accounting. I was like, oh my God, I got bored for whatever reason. And somehow my, my mom especially was encouraging me to be in the medical field. So I did that um, 20 years um, in the medical field. But it was really uh, neat because the first place that I did my internship was at the emergency room. My first job was at the emergency room. So it, um, it was very, it was a great experience. Yeah, I, I can't see you being an accountant. That's too boring for you, right? <laughs> it was boring. Although I, I, I need to learn how to work the numbers being where I'm at right now. It was back with partners, right? <laughs> now, Joni, I know that you met the world famous Mary Kay and, and you worked with her. Now, can you tell me what type, what kind of big impact did she make on your life? Very huge impact, Rusty. Well, let me go back. When I came from the Philippines, I went to attend a 10th grade IA high school, skip 11th grade. I had the opportunity to skip 11th grade and jump 12th grade. And also I was being bullied because of my long last name, constantly being bullied. But I kind of, you know, I said, how can I reverse that so that I, because right, right now there's so many, especially with uh, what happened with this pandemic, that it increased and so many young women are committing suicide increased like 50%. And, uh, but 
when you have that positive attitude, which I learned from Mary Kay, it helped me. But even beyond that, it was a very difficult being coming from the Philippines, very shy, being bullied. But, you know, I, I have, I guess, that inner, inner determination in myself that you have to be resilient, that don't listen to what they're saying, but you empower yourself. But being shy, <laughs> being shy, uh, but I, I wanted so badly to be in a beauty pageant, like I said, but how can I? I am so, so shy. So being a part of Mary Kay way, I, I learned so much from her that you have that can-do attitude, believe in yourself, have a positive attitude, because that really develop a foundation in you. You create your own destiny. No, oh, I, I, can, I cannot even imagine seeing, you know, Joni as being shy. <laughs> oh, yeah. People don't believe me, but I said, chapter three in my book. <laughs> Well, you know, that's that's why, I mean, even for me, when I was growing up, I would say that I was more shy and, you know, more of a follower. And so that's why we can inspire people to become leaders, right? Exactly. From our own experience. Yeah. Now, Joni, you know, let's talk about your fames organization. I mean, I felt so great to have been a speaker some months ago. Um, and what you're doing with the FAMES organization is huge and you have some great leadership. And can you tell our viewers about FAMES? Well, FAMES Hawaii Rusty is, our purpose and mission is mentoring, educating, motivating, and leadership development. For me being that, well, I didn't have any mentor at the time, but I think Mary Kay as one of my mentor, it, it's really, again, affected me so much. And actually, uh, the first book that I read was her book, You Can Have It All. And having reading that book, it really, truly, it was life changing because I was like in a status quo, being in the medical field, I was a nurse and had two young children. It was just like, like old routine, go to work, come home, cook, feed the kids, get up again. So same, same old, same old, right? But then I thought, okay, there is something, yeah, you can have it all, right? So what does that mean? But it is having that, building that confidence that I learned so much again uh, from uh, Mary Kay Ash, and she's a very huge influence uh, being to so many, uh, so many women. And uh, for me, you have to become a leader. You have to set a good example. And I always wanted to, to inspire, mentor, to help educate whatever that I have gained, uh, my knowledge, my skills in the past, I wanted to pass it on. And it's all about the legacy. And I feel when I talk to a lot of people, it seems like that sometimes they don't have the confidence, but Joni, I can't do this. And the thing with Mary, I with um, Fame Savai, that in the last, uh, it's going on 18 years, I'm super excited. And to help develop these um, people, young or adult, actually, it's so glad, I'm so, it's so fulfilling to see that, you know, they really, because the number one fear that they always say is to talk in front of people, right? And to see them develop themselves. And then now they can't, they're like, they can't stop talking just like me. <laughs> and develop leadership. It's all about, we cannot just say be successful in life and what we do, but to help them to, to connect in the community, to go back in the community is very, very important. And that's how I met a lot of people. And just like Dr. Sayo, oh, actually, I met Dr. Sayo 35 or so years ago when I was working at Queens. Her, I mean, his wife used to be my uh, patient. And so we've known each other that long. So to become a, a leader, you, you surround yourself with the right people so who uplift you. And that's what I have done in so many, many years to surround yourself. And that's what I tell, tell to a lot of the kids when I speak at schools or any organization and uh, my officers, directors, because you know, sometimes they limit themselves. And that's the other thing that I learned from so many people, Rusty, they limit themselves, but sky is the limit. And uh, yeah, and thank you for being one of our keynote speaker. That was amazing. And thank you for sharing your leadership, your beyond the lines. It's like, um, you're amazing. Well, Joni, you are really making a huge impact, you know, with a lot of these entrepreneurs and business owners. And I was, I was really happy to, to be there to meet all of them. And 
I want to talk talk with you about your books. I mean, million dollar attitude. I mean that that is that is a perfect title for you, Joey. I mean, it is it is absolutely amazing. And then your other book, you know, your second book, and you know, I like how you you talk about still sexy after sixty <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> well, actually, Rusty, I didn't plan of writing another book because, as you know, being a um, author yourself, it's very tedious. It takes so much. Of your time and having my full time, my job uh, with my things, and it is taking care of the family as well, community service. It's, um, I said, no, I will not. But then when people are asking me, like, Joni, how old are you? <laughs> I said, 60. And I said, oh, but you're still sexy at 60. And I said, aha, that will be the title of my book. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about attitude, still sexy at 60 and beyond. So it's all about numbers. And Joni, I really like your book because, you know, you talk about obviously having that million dollar attitude, but, you know, it's, it's, it's about that mindset and how we have choices. We have that power of choice to choose the right mindset, right? Exactly. Oh, yeah, what and I Joni, you know, so, and I know that you do speakings at schools and, you know, various organizations. And, and I know that, that that's one of your passions as well, right? I love it. Yes. <laughs> and I'm sure you do as well. <laughs> well, I, you know, I do a ton of that now. And, yes. and you know how you mentioned earlier that when you were a young girl and you were dreaming about being in a pageant and and now, I mean, you were the 2002 Mrs. Hawaii United States, and you competed on the mainland with 51 other contestants. And you, you're the executive director of your own pageants now. And I felt so uh, honored to have been a judge in one of your pageants a, a few years ago. And can you tell me about why you really love making an impact with a lot of these contestants? Rusty, because like I said, I, I was very, very shy and I have that dream. And I know a lot of young girls, they, they have all these dreams. I talk to them, I interview them, but they don't have the lack of confidence. And that's the one thing with the right attitude. And that's why I talk in my book that, you know, you, you know, you um, have to know your ABCs, like attitude, believe in yourself, courage, confidence, determination. So all of those uh, ingredients in life that if you want to move forward, you have to have those. And I just love being, to share those two to these young women. How can I empower these young women to set example? So they always say, oh, auntie, but I'm not like you. Oh, I'm not, the, uh, I'm not that pageant type. And I said, well, look at me, I'm five feet only. <laughs> I'm, five, I'm five feet in front of the Philippines, can hardly speak English, right? But I have determination. The ordinary and the extraordinary. And being that when I competed, and actually that's 20 years ago, 2020, uh, 2002 and uh, 2022, so exactly 20 years now. And going to compete national, I vividly remember coming from Hawaii, I have my sash on Mrs. Hawaii, right? And everywhere we go, Mrs. Hawaii, I want to go to Hawaii. You're so lucky you live in Hawaii. So even though I'm one of the shortest, uh, petite, there were four of us actually. And the rest are like six footer, right? They're high heels, six four. <laughs> but I, I stood out because that's what they keep saying. They want to live Hawaii. Lucky we live Hawaii, right? <laughs> it was a great experience. And so again, what I have gained through that process and what I tell to these young girls is, the experience that you gain, you develop yourself, you empower yourself, you learn how to multitask. And that's why people ask me, Johnny, you do this and this and this and that. I'm tired of listening to all the things that you do. But I learned how to multitask this because when you run to pageant um, and all the young women that you have interviewed, they're going to school, they're working, you have to look for sponsors, you have to sell tickets, there's so many things at the same time. And we look good at this, you know, you have to go to the gym, right? So trying to balance everything at one time, but I learned that into, into the pageant industry. And then of course with Mary Kay, you can have it all. <laughs> 
Well, I, I really, you know, seeing you behind the scenes with the contestants, I mean, it's great because I know that you truly care about each and every one of them and, and really trying to, like you said earlier, build their confidence, build their self-esteem. And Joni, I know that you were awarded, um, you, you were honored at, as um, the Business Network International, BNI. Um, can you tell me about what happened? Oh my gosh, uh, thank you for asking Rusty because that's one, one of my biggest accomplishments that I felt because um, I, I started my fame study at the time and then somebody asked me to build a, um, a chapter and I said, well, I don't know, I have this and this and that. But then I was like, okay. And then the director told me that, Joni, I don't take no for an answer. And I said, okay, God help me. <laughs> so I developed the fastest growing record breaking chapter here in Hawaii. I believe it's 25 chapters. And um, only my chapter that put together uh, survived and used to be like a model of BNI actually. So um, they used to bring, if they wanted to encourage somebody to uh, join BNI, they would bring them in my um, in my BNI million dollar chapter at the time. And then we are in 37 countries, there's nearly 5,000 chapters and top five international. So that was, that was really nice. But, like I was mentioning, Rusty, that I have to be creative. And I said, uh, to be at the top, you have to be creative about what, how can you fulfill, how can you achieve? But I was just thinking about my the destination. I wanna have 50, I only have 19 when we did, we're supposed to be debuted two weeks prior to, uh, and uh, it's like, okay, what do I need to do? So driving, I have pen and paper, and then it's like, oh, I need to call that person, or I'm driving, you know, King Street, like I had shared to you. And so I need this. So it just was constantly creating a, uh, to, to how you be able to achieve your goal. And just like you with your tennis, of course, you're always big creative, right? What you have to do next, and your mind constantly just thinking, well, Joni, I, I mean, that's why you've accomplished so many things in your young life already. And, and I know that you're not even halfway done. I mean, you got so many things more that you want to accomplish. And well, there's Joni, so much more. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And Joni, I want to I want to talk with you about my books. You, uh, you have both of my books and you know that you are all about a culture of excellence. And that's what I talk about. And also a key thing is how I, I want people to really welcome adversity, welcome challenges, because challenges and adversities are inevitable. It's going to happen. So we have to have the right mindset. And how do you help some of your people when they have adversities and challenges? Well, I tell them, Rusty, always have a million dollar attitude. Attitude is everything, really. Because when you develop that attitude, Rusty, you learn how to overcome um, anything. You learn how to go around, around, go through any um, obstacles in life. And, and, and I tell them, I say, you know what, this is part of life, but it, it keeps you moving forward. It is something that you learn from that and then just keep moving forward. If you don't want to make a mistake, do the right thing, make the right choices. Right, and that's just what it takes. But again, when you have the right mindset, it brings you to a different level of, you know, excellence in your life. You're always constantly striving for excellence. And yes, we go through, and I've gone through different adversity in my life as well. But you learn how to bring yourself up with the right attitude. And I always say, positive attitude plus positive action equals positive result. And that's going to bring me up. And it was so honored to be to be um, on the featured on the billboard in New York City, Times Square, of all places. That was just so humbling experience. And also, just a few months ago, be selected as the top influential business and community leader of the year award that was people from all over the world. I was the only person from the Philippines, a Filipina. So to be surrounded with these amazing people, it was just beyond me. It's beyond the lines, really. <laughs> <laughs> and to yeah. be, yeah, I selected as the Who's Who in America, Who's Who American Women, and I'm completing my, I was just interviewed with the National Digest as well, and, and the cover of Who's Who in American Millennium Magazine. It's like, where is this coming from? But what I told to the kids uh, at school or anyone, Anything that you do uh, 20 years, 10 years ago, don't disregard that because that's aligning you to be where you want it to be. 
and connecting with the right people. People find me everywhere now. It's just like, this is amazing. It's so exciting. Life is full of it. <laughs> <laughs> and Joni, I, I like what you said. I mean, because having a positive attitude, that's a choice. I mean, you can, people can choose the alternative, a negative attitude, but it, it basically takes the same amount of energy to choose a positive attitude versus a negative one. Exactly. And like, uh, like in your book too, and with my, uh, you know, when you get up in the morning, what do you tell to yourself, even if you don't feel good? And the one thing that I learned too is when you, um, you don't feel good, you say, I feel good. I feel great. I feel awesome. Even if I don't feel awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, making your bed early in the morning. I wonder as soon as you wake up, because that sets your day. And the one thing that I just wanted to share, I don't know how much minutes we have, but I have a five-year-old granddaughter. I visited her, them, my daughter in Colorado a few months ago and i always make my bed every morning right and then um so i went to um my, my daughter went to work early so sneaking into my room and then when i went to um get out and use the restroom she was still sleeping when i went back my our bed is already made and then i was like wow i'm so impressed and she said because Grandma, I noticed that you make your bed every morning, so I did it for you. And it's like, oh my gosh, you know, set a good example is how you talk, you walk, you have to walk the talk, and you set a good, good example to everybody. I, I like it. I mean, it that is definitely leading by example. And Joni, what, what would you say is the best advice you ever received? Be humble, and the sky is the limit. And the one thing that I learned from Dr. Say as well is only eat one full of meal a day <laughs> and be wise. <laughs> There's so many things um, actually that I just have learned. And it's and I think that's I just kind of incorporated in my daily life. And we not just one or two, there's so many. And surround yourself. You can learn so many things from so many people. And that's why it, it, it's just amazing. I'm so glad that we connect and I'm so glad Dr. Say you brought you in our uh, Famous when he was a speaker, and then you become one. Well, we both love Dr. Larry Siu, and and um, Joni. I want to ask you. You know, when you reflect back on your life so far, what what's a very valuable, important lesson you learned? Positive attitude, <laughs> and you talk about that in your in your book as well. Because Rusty, when you don't have that positive attitude, you have negative attitude. It just the whole day, I mean, you kind of like affects other people around you as well. And I have friends sometimes, they talk to me and they say, Joni, I just love talking to you because I feel good after I've done talking to you, it just uplift me. And they said, I have friends that, oh my God, that talk about their, uh, like, you, you know, relationship, their at work, and it's just, just complaining, complaining. And they said, they feel so drained. <laughs> so it, it, it it's all about the, attitude, the positivity, you have to give that positive energy. And the one thing that like in my book, testimonial, they always say, well, they can feel when Joni comes in the room because they feel my energy. <laughs> What's this well, Joni, you, you definitely have positive energy. And, and where are your books available? How can people get it? Amazon. There's always Amazon, Barnes and Noble's, Author House as well, or in my office. I have a few in here and I can you know, personally autograph it for you. Nice. And Joni, I want to ask you about your husband, Tom. I mean, you guys make such a great team together and he's such a great man. Out of all of his, the great character traits that he has, what do you feel is his best character trait that you admire about him? His humbleness, Rusty, and he just fully support me and he's just who he is. And he is a man of his word. He is, um, oh my God, there's so much to, so many things. It's, it's his, he's so uh, undescribable. <laughs> he, he is the, the, so sometimes I have a lot of friends that are like, where did you find him? Oh, does he have a brother? Does he have, because I mean, he's very mellow. We're completely opposite actually. I mean, he loves to surf. I don't surf. He loves to swim. He does rock water swim. I do not swim at all, but we love to 
to walk at the beach and just uh, very, uh, very supportive, understanding, very loving and caring. It's, it is, um, yes, I, um, he is just the right man for me, I think. <laughs> yeah, see, and, and that you guys are a definite example of how opposites attract, right? Really? I know. It's like, I said, babe, um, uh, don't you wish that you have somebody that's going to surf with you and say, no, babe, that's okay. So we accept it's others, you know, our, our strength, our weakness. And I think that's made it important. But when we together, we, we love it. The other thing too, we have a sense of humor. And that's the one thing that we entertain each other. <laughs> oh, you definitely do. I mean, I, I love talking with Tom and, and I can see how you make him a better person and how he makes you a better person. And, and that's really why it works. You guys are better together than if you were individuals. Exactly. And I'm just so fortunate, Rusty, to find the head the, the right person, my soulmate, that we fully understand our needs. And that's the one thing, Rusty, that a lot of, of, of relationships, and sometimes they don't give a space to their, you know, to their partner and by controlling them, but no, you let them go. <laughs> you know? Do what they love to do so I can do what I love to do as well. And then when we're together, we share our experiences and we have something to talk about. Oh, you guys definitely have a lot to talk about and a lot oh, yeah. of experiences. And Joni, I, I wanna ask you, what are some things that you feel the greatest leaders do? Uh-huh, well, again, right attitude, right? Just like you, <laughs> hard work. The one thing that a lot of people sometimes they said, oh, work smart and you don't have to work hard. But I said, that's baloney. I've talked to so many people who are millionaire, billionaire, successful people. You have to put that extra, extra hours. You have to go beyond that uh, time. I mean, just like last night, I was still here at 12 o'clock at night, <laughs> preparing to make sure everything goes right. <laughs> but you have to be willing to um, work late at night or on weekend. Because have you met anyone that very successful that works only nine to five? That's unheard of. And, and that's what I always tell people, you have to go to the extra mile. You have, I've sacrificed my sleep most of the time because I always say you snooze, you lose, right? <laughs> no. That's right. It is, yeah, you have to be willing to work hard and have to be, um, um, again, we have to write people as well. and. You know, surround yourself with smart people so you can learn from them. Well, Joni, I, I completely agree with everything you said. And I, I want to thank you for really taking time in your super busy schedule to, to join me on the show today. And you are definitely someone that goes beyond the lines. Thank you, Rusty. And I want to correct you, not busy, but productive. We are always being productive. <laughs> now, thank you for having me. I really, truly appreciate it. And um, yeah, this has been an incredible uh, experience as well. Thank you, Joni. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble, and Joni's too. I hope that Joni and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Aloha.